Up on your weather station, hundreds of thousands of Louisiana residents remain without power. Good morning. Thank you for waking up with us today. I'm Maya Hudgens. Hunter Elise will be back tomorrow. New this morning, it's been a week since Hurricane Ida ripped through southeast Louisiana, leaving many parts of the area devastated. And for many, they've been surviving without power. Fox's Anna McAllister has more. We are bad. We don't have power. We don't have air conditioner. Uh, it's terrible. As the sun beats down on New Orleans, thousands of energy customers are still without power, leaving residents struggling to get through another hot night. We're feeling the family, the kids, it's terrible. We uh, eat in the, in the street because inside it's very hot. Sunday morning, Entergy reported that 39% of customers in New Orleans have power. But tens of thousands of people are still in the dark and frustrated to say the least. I feel bad, real bad. I feel like crazy somebody else. Henry McGuffey lost practically everything during Ida, and now he's trying to cope with the intense heat with no electricity in his home. It's not a fit place to be in right now. For real. I wouldn't even want to put a dog in there right now. Entergy says Ida devastated their transmission lines and say more electrical poles went down during Ida than Hurricane Katrina, Delta, and Zeta combined. Thousands of linemen are working across the area to restore power as quickly as possible while locals try to tolerate life without electricity. It's told me a lot about uh, having patience and uh, a lot of patience. You know, I'm not one that has a lot of patience at times, but. <laughs> Day by day, I've learned to have it. Entergy says most New Orleans residents can expect power in a few days, but the wait has some wishing they left before the storm. Maybe next time I run. For real. Reporting in. Recipients of SNAP benefits in 18 Louisiana parishes impacted by Hurricane Ida will receive automatic 55% replacement benefits due to power outages affecting at least half of their residents. This comes due to a waiver approval from the U.S. Department of Agriculture, Food and Nutrition Service. The 18 parishes approved for automatic SNAP replacement benefits are listed on your screen and can also be found on our website, MyRiclemist.com. 55% of each household's monthly portion for all August will automatically be loaded onto recipients' SNAP EBT cards by September 11th. SNAP recipients in other impacted parishes who lost food purchased with SNAP benefits due to a power outage of 24 hours or more can request benefits by submitting a completed and signed SNAP 38 form to DCFS. The deadline for requesting replacements due to Hurricane Ida is September 28th. Continuing our coverage, Governor John Bell Edwards visited Livingston Parish and surveyed more damage following the storm. Fox was there and has more from Livingston Parish. I'm asking you to be patient. I'm asking you to be good neighbors to one another. Governor John Bell Edwards toured parishes affected by Hurricane Ida. In a press conference, he gave out current updates on relief efforts. Uh, earlier this week, we announced that the Army Corps of Engineers uh, has activated the Blue Roof program. Already 33,000 uh, people have registered for uh, this service. Edwards announced more relief on the way, like immediate disaster unemployment, transitional shelter programs, and mental health resources. Uh, individual assistance is, is available. Uh, please register if you are an Ida survivor and you've not yet done so. He also warned of possible scams during this hard time. FEMA representatives always have a badge that identifies themselves. They are never going to ask you for money. Another item on his agenda that he talks about is the possibility of more severe weather coming our way. Uh, there is a system that's in the Bay of Campeche, and it is moving into the Central Gulf, uh, and it's going to come close to Louisiana. But they're not necessarily predicting that it's going to strengthen into a hurricane, but they obviously cannot rule that out either. Edwards says even if this comes to us as a tropical storm, we are in no condition to receive that much rainfall. We want everybody... Uh, to do what you can, and we're certainly going to be helping to get you in the best possible position to weather this storm. Vanya Joseph, NBC Local 33 News. In community news, the city of Bastrop is without a police chief. We're learning Carl Givens has been suspended by the Civil Service Board. Mayor Betty Olive confirmed the suspension took place last week. Givens had only been in the position for two weeks. We're still working to gather details. As of now, no one has been appointed to act as police chief. 
Moving on to the crime beat, one person is dead and another three are recovering from a fall following a shooting yesterday morning. Deputies were called to the 1600 block of Winsboro Road just before 3 o'clock. No arrests have been made. We'll continue to keep you updated on air and online as we get more information. And a Monroe man is in custody after pointing a loaded handgun at his girlfriend. Police say 41-year-old Otis Lee Sims Jr. pointed the gun to her face and threatened to shoot her following a verbal altercation. Sims is being charged with aggravated assault with a firearm and two counts of possession of a controlled dangerous substance. Still to come on NBC 10 News today, we take a look at our hometown hellos. Go leave a comment on our Facebook page. Plus, we talk to two families in need of help as Hurricane Ida leaves them with a tree in their house.